I often talk about being in the business of being myself. Now, in today's fast-paced digital world, it's easy to uh, just get caught in a confusing vortex of options. You know, absolutely, the plethora of possibilities is one of the greatest blessings that this present generation enjoys, but it can also lead to creative paralysis. Unsuspecting digital entrepreneurs can be stricken with opportunity overdose, like some poor nerve drug victim. You know, we, we, there's so much out there. Should I be an author? What about TikTok or whatever the latest craze happens to be? Mini offers or flagship courses, e-com or e-coach? What about Amazon merch? Should I follow the funnel guys, jump into challenges or leap on the go live bandwagon? You know, the list continues. YouTube, mini sites, online workshops, Kindle, Etsy, PLR or POD, podcast or premium coaching. I'm pretty sure by the time you listen to this, there'll probably be several more choices that have been hitched to the list. So how do you choose? You know, it's a known fact that too many choices most often lead to no choice at all. It, and sometimes it's just the easiest choice is to choose not to choose <laughs> and, to, and to put off that painful process of saying no to so many glistening possibilities. We don't like to say no. What if we make the wrong decision? What if we choose the wrong thing, make a bad call? You know, what if we say no when we should have said yes and we miss out? Or what if we say yes when we should have said no and end up wasting our time and our money? You know, and the, and the problem is in that kind of place of possibility paralysis, we just stay stuck frozen in the headlights with this with a stream of fresh opportunities hurtling towards us month after month, year after year. I want to say like, stop the traffic, stop the traffic. You know, and, and, and let me bring something obvious into this equation. What is the one factor that runs throughout every and any opportunity that you face? You know, the golden thread that ties the whole thing together. And I believe it's actually a great deal simpler than, than you think. Uh, you are the common factor in this enterprise equation. You know, the longevity of your enterprise, whatever it is, is going to be determined by the investment of your heart in its fulfillment. The scriptures teach, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Now, the word issues that's used here literally means the outgoings or the boundaries of the heart. The outgoings, the outworking and the boundaries of our lives are determined by what comes up and what flows from our spirit, the heart man, the inner man or the inner woman. You know, your, your financial and creative destiny right now at this second, like in this instant, resides within your spirit, not out there, somewhere else. It's not out of your reach. It's closer than your very breath. No one else holds the wheel of your victory. You do. And tending carefully to the inner life is going to steer you to the right places, to the right people at the right time. I absolutely believe that. I believe, I believe that this is truth. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of the things that the world is running after and seeking will be added to you. Now, it may not be added quite as quickly as you would like it to be. It may not be added in the manner that you would have expected or, or dreamt. But God is faithful. We count him faithful. We judge him faithful. Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. And the results that we see, the outgoings of our life will expand our boundaries and bring us in to whatever your promised land may be. But it's finding that inner life 
is the first and foremost thing. It's the most important thing. You know, I, I was an absolute opportunity hog and gobbling up every new idea that crossed my inbox, you know, dancing from one thing to the other and back again. The, the, my online business trajectory felt more like a whirling dervish than a steady climb, you know, just spinning around like, oh, wow, this opportunity over here and this one over there. And then uh, it came to a point where the Holy Ghost one day just stopped me in my tracks and pointed me to the story of Mary and Martha. Now, um, if you've been around me for any amount of time, you've probably heard me say this, like most preachers, you know, I have about four stories that I tell. I just tell them in different ways <laughs> at different times. But this was so profound for me. You know, we read in Luke chapter 10, verse 40 and 41, Martha was cumbered with much serving. And she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. Martha was cumbered, full of care and troubled about many things. And I, at that time, could totally relate. David, David, you are cumbered with many things. Yeah, careful and troubled. Yes, Lord. Yes, I am. And those were the words of the Holy Ghost that he spoke that day as I sat in this. I had a little uh, a chair. It wasn't an armchair. It was like, I don't even know what kind of chair it was, like just, just kind of an office chair of some kind in the corner of my tiny office in the house that we had in London. And um, he spoke those words so clearly to me. And then said, and uh, I'm going to quote from the Amplified Bible because I think that this brings it out so beautifully. But there is need of only one or but a few things. You know, I, I believe the entrepreneurial life is not meant to be one that's frazzled to a crisp by a million demands. You know, the romanticized picture of the overworked, ultra-dedicated marketplace genius sacrificing all for the sake of his startup is really quite farcical. You know, there is nothing romantic about sacrificing your family and your health in pursuit of money and fame. Jesus has a pathway prepared for you that is perfectly in pace with his will. And I, I, I honestly, I don't know if you've noticed but I have rarely found God to be in a rush. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I asked the Lord in, in that conversation, what, what am I one or but a few things? And, you know, seven years later, I've made over a million dollars in Amazon royalties alone. And that's aside from other things. Now, I'm not saying that to brag because there have been lots of expenses involved in that. There's got been a lot of learning. There's been investment in uh, masterminds and my own education, etc. That's not money that's sitting in my bank, like just, just laughing in my bank account. But it does indicate that when we focus in on what is best fitted to our personality, it can lead to radical results. You know, it's not to say that there have not been challenges and there's been a great deal of sweat equity poured in to uh, this journey that I've taken. But my focus changed from everything and everyone to just one or but a few things that I've learned to do extremely well. The choice of direction was really determined by this question. And it's maybe one that you could ask yourself at whatever junction you are at right now. And the question was simply this, what do I want to be doing five or 10 years from now? Now, I'm not talking kind of vision board or any of that kind of stuff, okay? Although I believe in that we can frame our future, yeah, by words of faith. I believe that, I believe in visionary and vision casting, yeah? I do, I've seen it work, I've seen it happen, I see it in the scriptures, um, but what, what I'm talking about here is more than just because sometimes we can get very cerebral about those things to, to think it's like, OK, if I tick these various boxes, then that's going to equal 
X or Y, yeah? But I'm talking more about the heart. You know, remember the heart issue, the issues of life flowing from there? I wanted to be a writer. That was when I when I pulled it, stripped it all back, and, and, and I kind of just like just before the presence of God said, Lord, this is what I would love to do. This is where my heart feels most alive and most able to bring value to other people. And, you know, I was already writing, but I was also juggling several op other opportunities. I felt like a circus clown. Dun, 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 uh, website business over here, T-shirt thing over, going over here, mini, mini kind of uh, AdSense sites here, Bible school writing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Now, the difference now is... I'm much more in the business of being myself. I'm still working with the Holy Ghost. I'm still in conversation with the Holy Ghost. But, you know, in making that decision, Lord, I want to be a writer. You know, it just allowed me to drop some of the ballast that was stopping me bringing my A game to the table in my chosen field. You know, I was doing so many other things that I had no time or energy to dedicate to the very one or but a few things that in my heart of hearts I wanted to do. You know, and, and, and I feel very much more now that I'm in, I am in the business of being myself. I'm no longer running here and there earnestly hoping for an answer, although I do fall into that trap at times and find myself kind of forgetting what I'm talking about today, that, law, that, that the answer lies within me, the kingdom dwells within me, and that I can come and in conversation with the king who knows the end from the beginning, I can discover my next step. We're told in Psalm 37 verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, some, some may cynically read this and say, awesome, man, I want a Porsche. <laughs> you know, but this verse holds so much more than a brand new set of wheels on your driveway or whatever your thing may be. You know, God gives you the desires of your heart. He plants desires. And what I want to encourage you to do today is take some time and ask yourself, what are the deep real, resonant desires that ring true in my heart. You know, there's a quote uh, that the source of it's unknown. It's attributed to numerous different people. So I won't presume to know exactly who said it. But um, the quote goes something like this. There are two great days in a person's life, the day they are born and the day they discover why. And you know, moving into the fields of entrepreneurship takes real courage. The venture must be backed not primarily by money, because often, to be honest, that's in scarce supply, especially in the early stages, but by a heartfelt conviction and a sense of calling. I believe that business, kingdom business, you know, being out there in the marketplace in whatever arena, whatever realm, you know, it's a call to be salt and light in that marketplace, to generate wealth on many levels, not just financial. I believe that God's people have got something of inestimable worth to bring into the marketplace and to begin to establish a strong voice in the, in, in the world. You know, and it doesn't just come from behind the pulpit. It doesn't just come from within the walls of the church. God has a body of believers who are out there. The church equips the saints for the work of the ministry, but the saints are most often out there in the marketplace doing whatever it is they do day by day by day, week by week. And there is a kingdom calling to bring grace into all of those situations and a kingdom calling to create wealth through entrepreneurial wisdom and action. 
Now, your outgoings, the outgoings of your heart really are the creative crystallization of all of that personal genius that dwells within you, your history, your experience, your expertise, you know, your take on the world, your view, your frame being brought to others so they can look through it and see the world through your eyes. You know, I believe that those crystallizations of Christ within us, in all of the realms of existence, will flow out to the world and bring blessing to others. And the results of those genuine, heartfelt creations will be abundant compensation. But it really begins here with embracing who you are. Your uniqueness is the ingredient that adds a special flavor to everything that you do that leaves you really in a company of one. You know, and you cannot compete, nor can anyone compete with you because no one else is who you are. No one else can bring what you bring. And, and it, this, this uh, of all the things that I can encourage you to do today, it is this. Come back to your heart. What do you carry inside? What is it that you deeply desire? What is the resonant chord that plays within you when you think, what do I want to do? Today, five years from now, 10 years from now, what do I want to be doing? How do I want to be uh, not spending your time, but sowing your time? Because we are here in service of others. You know, that's really the entrepreneurial life is a life of service to others. And so whatever you choose to do, you know, you are ultimately in the business of being yourself building around that reality, learning and growing in the things that sit well with us, that we feel fitted for and feel fitted for us is so important. Grow in confidence, yeah, uh, to the point where you're able to jettison some of the things that don't sit well with you, yeah? Will it be easy? No, it won't be easy. Will it be worth it? Absolutely, 100%. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully, uh, it's been an encouragement to you today. If you want to connect any further, you can do so through my website at davidleemartin.com. Have a great day.